folks, Eric Woldridge here, the Additive Guru channel. Going to do a demonstration on generative for you today. Just a quick tutorial. This is for a uh, small object that we're going to put on a, a sort of a shelf that's going to be in a metal window frame. And so we're going to use magnets and some generative to create something uh, visually interesting and also functional. Uh, what I've created something is pretty, pretty easy to grasp. All I did was design a uh, simple cylinder here that we will use to implant some magnets and then I used a uh, quick little fillet or a little chamfer there to round the edge off and then I did a move or a copy to actually vertically copy it up a certain dimension and then actually did another one above that to create the arrangement I'm after. The overall design is something of, of this nature. What we're going for is if this is the window we want the actual shelf to have the magnets hold it in place here and here and all three of those points and then let generative do its work in terms of tying it all together uh, what we are interested with this one particularly is to resist any kind of counter torque associated with any mass pushing down so that's what we're going for and so I have those three created pretty fast and of course the rest of it was just a simple rectangle extrude to about uh, 30 uh, millimeters, maybe about four thick, nothing really really special there. So if you want to you can recreate this, I'll show you the dimensions real fast. The uh, first sketch dimension was a revolve down here, uh, roughly uh, about, it looks like actually I'm a little bit off because that measurement isn't what I thought it was, so let me fix that real quick. That's supposed to be the five. It's probably going to give me a warning now. And I'll change that down to five. There we go. So five, uh, about 1.8 thick, 1.8 thick, and then a gap between there and the center line of 10.3. This would be a diameter dimension. So that's the size we need to receive the magnet. I hit finish sketch, and then it's good. I will go ahead and check the copy that I did here, or the move, I should say. And all I did was actually tell it to click on it and say move and then say create a copy and then set the first one for 240 above this one. And then I did it again for another copy and set this one to be 100 from the base. So this one's 40 up and this one's 100 up. Now, could I have done this by just remodeling each one? Absolutely. But the move uh, type here by component X, Y, and Z is pretty handy. And then, of course, the top piece was simply a 70 long, uh, 4 thick, about 30 from the back side off there. And it was extruded to, I believe, about 30. Yeah, symmetrically speaking. So it's probably about 60 overall. Which probably is a little bit bigger than it needs to be. I'll set that back to 40. Ah, wrong way. Sorry. I'll set that back to 20. There we go. So anyway, there's the creation. And once I have it modeled, then it's a matter of just going on into generative. So if you want to take a moment, pause the video, and recreate kind of what I've done, feel free to do so. All right. Now, on to the generative side. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and go through my generative approach. There's going to be some things that I obviously want to keep and some things I don't. So I'll click on my preserved geometry. Obviously, I need this, 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 and this preserved. So I'm switching those to green and I'm going to need to create some obstacle geometry. Now I'm not too concerned about anything on this side, not too, well I shouldn't say that, I'm not too concerned about anything going on down here or in between. I am concerned about nothing happening above and I am concerned about nothing happening in these holes. So I'm going to need to go create some geometry. So I'll go into edit model and I'll just do a quick extrusion off this surface, take it straight up and make sure I set it to a uh, new body that way it doesn't join with the other one and then I'll also do the same thing here I'll say create click that surface that surface and that surface pull those way on out and make sure they are set to new bodies as well that should allow me to finish my edit model and then set these as click here, do optical geometry, and click that, 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 that. 
and therefore this should keep me clear of all this zone. Now, if I find out that it still wants to kind of get into these areas, I might do one more feature creation just to be on the safe side. Again, I'm not too concerned if it, if it puts anything between here and here and down there. I'm just concerned that it doesn't put anything where I'm going to mount it to the wall or uh, anything in the holes themselves. So I'm going to do play it safe, do one more edit model, and I will create a sketch. I'll tell it to be on this surface, and I'm just going to make one giant rectangle like right here. Say finish sketch, and I'll tell it to extrude that giant rectangle that way as a new body. And hit OK. And then back into finish edit model, and then go and change my obstacle geometry on this one to OK. And so now I should be plenty clear. It should know not to do anything in any of this red zone uh, or anything else for that matter. So we should be set that way. It should know to stay out of those areas. So now it's a matter of setting up my other features and uh, we can go ahead and, and establish some of our design conditions. I'm going to turn off my obstacle geometry just so it's not in the way anymore. So first thing I need to do is go ahead and let it know what's going to be fixed. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my constru structural constraints here and I'm going to zoom in real close and let it know that this surface right here is going to be fixed. That surface is going to be fixed and this surface is going to be fixed. So, and that is technically what would be close to touching on uh, our, our frame system. It's not exactly, but uh, it's pretty close and we'll see how it responds to that. So I set those as my constraints. And now it's time to kind of determine what is going to be um, my loads. And to be honest, we're not going to be put on a lot of load on this thing. So it won't be that much. Um, I'll go ahead and say structural loads. I'll click on this surface right here. And, and we're not looking but probably maybe at most a pound, maybe two. So I can set that at perhaps 10 Newtons and that will be just fine. Um, there's nothing really, really special about this. It's gonna be a lightweight object. Um, and we're just using magnets essentially to hold it up in place. So, you know, maybe we can go to 12 just to see what happens, but that's the case there. Next, we're going to set our objectives, which I can just hit edit. And minimizing mass will be fine. Maybe max, we'll, we'll just see what, what's going to happen there. I don't need much of a safety factor, but I'm going to go ahead and put in 1.4 just for a little bit of a safety factor. And we do need to establish the manufacturing. So I'm going to go over here and click on edit. And we're going to definitely 3D print this. So I will get rid of the other two. Overhang angle, we can probably allow a 40 degree overhang angle. And we'll say minimum thickness can be about two. Uh, in additive, we have found that uh, the, th the thinner walls within a certain region, or within a certain uh, limit, has a tendency to have a little bit more strength uh, results out of it because it doesn't have enough space for infill. And uh, maybe 2.4 will be fine. So what we have established is that I've got my cylinders fixed because those are where the magnets are going to be attached to. We have our load on the object. It's obviously going to create a torque, which we should get a counter torquing effect associated with this magnet in particular. And now we need to establish the steady materials. So I'll come over there and hit the edit button. And let's see what we've got to choose. It's going to be aluminum. That's probably not going to work for us too well. So I will actually, yeah, we can actually use a nylon as a basis for the process. So I can actually drag that. Actually, we probably better not. We better go ahead and just use our material library and choose something in the same realistic sense of what we're probably going to be doing, which is going to be probably closer to ABS. So I'll drag that up and close. Okay, so we've got uh, our materials selected. We are going to have uh, um, our process selected. We have these fixed. We have our loads applied and we should have our zones of do not put anything here. So to kind of see how it's going to go, we'll go ahead and hit generate. And let it start thinking. Let's see what kind of results it might come up with. All right. 
It's done its first run. They turn the optical geometry off. And let's see what it's done here. It has left the openings in my holes correctly, so that looks okay. And here's the deal. Even if it turns out and does do some generation in there, we can always kind of just mill that out real quickly if need be. So that's looking okay. It looks like it's getting the right idea. It is kind of encroaching on my object just a little bit there, but I don't think that's going to be a problem because it kind of tapered it off at that point. So, you know, I'm thinking we're, we might be okay. So one or two more adjustments I may actually do is just go ahead and get rid of the aluminum associated with the material out of there so I don't have to worry about it. And that is by just going back in here and saying edit and I can right click and delete that one. And then we can close that back down. Alright, so our study materials are now set to just the, ah shoot, I deleted the wrong one. Let's fix that real quick. Bring the ABS back up. And uh, let's see, yeah, that should be good. Hit save one more time. I have seen that there's sometimes that it's a crash if I do this in the wrong order, so I'm going to right click on it again and delete it out. I always like to have another plastic in there before, or another material in there before I delete the other one out. Otherwise, I have seen it crash before. So, one more save. And uh, let's see if that affected anything in the generation side. All right, so we see that I have the object there. Um, it looks like it doesn't seem to have any major problems. i tell you what I am going to do though. I want to have a little fun with this. So I want to actually add another obstacle in. And I'm going to go back in and I'm going to design in another obstacle somewhere in play that will keep it from generating into areas that I don't want it to. So let me get rid of some of these bodies so I can see some things. And that's that one. Those and I'll hit sketch and I'll select, we should be right in the center, yep. So I'm going to come in here and just use a spline to maybe say I don't want it to be in this zone. Maybe I don't want to, in, don't want to invert that though, that's not going to be cool. So I'm just going to add this obstruction right here and uh, let it work around that. And I'm also going to add an obstruction, say perhaps right in this zone. Again, just doing something to create a organic design that is visually interesting. All right, so I'll finish the sketch. And I will extrude these as symmetrical. And then, of course, way on out. And switch it to new body. Finish the sketch there and tell it to add these also to the obstacles. And we can turn this back on. Yeah. Now, you notice the other ones are still probably turned off from the edit model, but they should still be there. Uh, we can see that real quick to be sure. Ah, we have to turn this back on. So we'll go back into. Uh, edit model and turn these back on. There we go. So we'll do another generate and see how it does with this. Alright, now you can see that my extra obstacles are creating some little issues for it to actually work around and I like this design a little bit more. Uh, if I want to I can go modify this uh, feature a little bit more to let it go around this way if I wanted to and I may just do that just to top it off just a little bit and I will edit this creation here maybe pull it in this way thin it out a little bit stretch it up and give it more of a path from here to there New sketch pitch yeah, model and generate one more time Ideally, we're wanting to just give a little bit more of an artistic feel to it. Looks like it is working around. 
You'll notice that it is drawing in on the underside. It, uh, it thinks it can do everything it needs to in this zone, which is fine if it can. No problems with that at all. But obviously these would be some odd oddities if we can avoid those. And again, it doesn't have hardly any actual weight on it. So there's no reason that I have to worry about not having a lot of strength. This is going to be a kind of fairly small part. Alright, so looks like we're doing okay there. And it will probably operate. So we might as well go ahead and see how the generation approach works. So I'll come up to generate up here at the top. And yeah, I can stop the preview. It's okay at this point in time. Set it up, ready to go, and tell it to generate the study. And we'll see how it turns out. All right, just kind of it. They're all still processing, but as you can see, it is doing a pretty good job in terms of what we were after. This one looks like it's shaping up pretty nicely. Uh, it did avoid the holes, although I'm kind of concerned that maybe there's some overlap in terms of where our magnets need to be. Um, that might need some tweaking. It almost looks like this one's sticking out further than the others. Uh, may just be the way I'm looking at it. But uh, it's working pretty good so far. And we are definitely getting into the ballpark of where we want to be. And we'll see how it progresses on. Alright, a little bit further along you can see that this one is looking really interesting. Even thinner than we probably would have imagined. Um, However, again, it doesn't have a lot of weight on it. So that does kind of make sense that it could be pretty thin and then, it's, and then it worked just fine. I can probably go back in there and compensate for it being a little bit too thin, visually speaking, by uh, selecting a, uh, an earlier iteration or maybe setting some minimal thicknesses, maybe even increasing the weight. But I'm definitely liking the way this one's looking in terms of my, the look and what we're going for. These others are looking pretty interesting too. This one looks a little bit uh, asymmetrical. Uh, this one's pretty interesting. This one's getting pretty thin here, maybe a little bit too much. So we'll just kind of see how they keep panning out and see if they converge. Alright, so this one ended up converging. Uh, looks like the others are still processing through, but we're kind of resulting in the same result, the same shapes overall. I like this one. It's just a little bit too thin for my taste. So more than likely I can just pop in here and drag it back a few times on the iteration. Uh, you know, it is pretty unique, and uh, obviously this little feature here needs to go. The overall shape, though, looks like it will perform pretty well. It looks like it did turn out and leave all of these areas open as we desired. So I may actually try to produce this just to have it, but I can see maybe coming back a few steps to thicken it up a little bit being a, a good idea. Maybe taking it back to about 30 here. That looks like a good design that would work just fine and uh, also still show the, sort of the power of generative. So anyway, there's kind of the results, and uh, it's a good exercise. What I recommend is you go into the same process, model up what I have, and follow the uh, steps that I did to create your own generation of it, and uh, see which one you like. You might find it to be pretty handy. We typically use um, N35 uh, magnets, uh, 10 by 3 diameter. I'll draw that on the screen if you want to use this for your own design those little disc magnets because they end up being about three millimeters and ten and so therefore the openings that we create for them are typically diameter of 10.3 and uh, we'll actually stack two magnets together so it's a total of six but we'll make the depth of the hole only be about five so that a little bit of the magnet sticks out beyond the object so you can use that, you can order those online for yourself and create some uh, magnetic shells for little displays in uh, steel base windows. Alright, happy design and uh, make sure to check out some of our other videos and uh, see if there's anything out there that you might find useful as well.